uh, episode of Talking Shit. Um, there are no super chats, meaning even if you try to pay, it's not gonna, it's not gonna let you. I'm just gonna basically just preform, try to take everything from the peasant list, and just talk about whatever. A lot of your coyote questions. There's been a lot of people going to the tracks, so a lot of videos popping up of people going to the tracks. Um, I've gotten invited to no less than 10 or 15 pages over the weekend of street racing stuff, digging. I, I don't accept any of those because I get enough messages as it is. Um, but I'm glad to see people out there um, finally get into racing, people coming to their senses when it comes to all this COVID crap. And hopefully, you know, we can just talk a little shit today, talk a little bit about everything. Um, as a lot of you saw, the Lund Racing Grey Goose started up. If you're a member of the Lund Racing page or a customer and a, or just a, a member of the Lund Racing page, you saw that we started up the Great Goose that uh, Keith Ray at Wonder Racing built. Uh, did a whole bunch of work, pretty much ground up, engine, turbo, uh, everything, everything. He did it. So it started up uh, successfully, and we're going to just go ahead and keep tweaking away at it and see you know, if we can get it running good, get it back to home base to Lund Racing, and you know, have at it, like go, go see what we can do with that, um, gray goose. The gray goose obviously was built to push everyone's shit in that has a six R 80, whether it be a Supra, whether it be anything with a six R 80, the gray goose is built to beat anything, uh, that runs a six R 80 or with a Ford racing, uh, computer. Basically it's not a standalone. It's not an AEM. It's not Holly. It's not anything. It's a Ford racing control pack gen two in it. So it'll control. Oh, it's basically OEM. And that'll basically, you know, stretch out the capabilities of that computer, see what we can do, see what limitations there are, if any. And we'll see what's up. Everyone's asking if this is live. This is live, um, free. So you cannot do any super chats. Basically, I'm going to take off the peasant list. That's right, off the peasant list and just talk all day long. So I see Jeremiah Camp is on. Dude, there is no more loyal guy in terms of the show. Then people like Jeremiah Camp, Tony Full Bolt On, uh, YouTube Corrupt Anti Free Speech, Coyote Car Guy, all you guys have been watching me, you know, since the beginning. I've been disrespecting families since the beginning here, just kind of talking all this shit. And people are amazed that I'm still doing that. Uh, 48 uh, episodes in, which is almost, almost a year. Like I don't count this episode as a real episode. I count every Tuesday as an episode. But anyway, the gray goose got started up and I think senior's going to start working on the blue goose and we'll see what's going on with that. Um, seniors building that one. Keith built the gray goose. So that'll be interesting to see both of those cars run this. How the hell are you paying me? I got it. No, I got it. I literally said to not monetize and this thing is still monetized. No, that's not good. I don't want to get any money from anybody today. So I'm going to see what I can do to change that. <laughs> oh my God, I got to stop that. Viewer activity. How do I do that? <laughs> I don't want you guys paying me. Don't fucking pay me. Please don't pay me, guys. This was meant to be a, a free show. And I hit do not monetize. And for whatever reason, you guys are somehow paying me. Please, please, please don't pay. Don't pay. Um, the last thing I need is to... Let me see what I can do here to like stop you guys from monetizing, <laughs> from sending money. Um, uh, no, I'm not going to take your money. Fuck. Seriously, this is supposed to be a free show, a free show. I, Damn it. How do I go in? See, I can't do it live. Edit. Let me see if I can do edit. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, the, the Enable monetization is off and somehow you guys are still paying me. <laughs> look, I mean, it's it's look, this is what I see on my side, right? Right there. See, enable monetization. It is off. I don't want your money. And no, it's not made for kids. So, you know, th that lets people know that are searching YouTube. I still, to this day, get people calling me a butt-fucking asshole for, for basically, um, you know, saying fucking shit uh, on my episodes. And I'm like, dude, I mean, really? Like, like if you don't know my channel, um, you know, you, you shouldn't be letting your kids... Like, you know, if your nephew Billy is on your lap, first of all, you're a fucking creep. Second of all, uh, you're you're not proofreading or basically pre-screening what you're going to show your kids. You're going to count that on YouTube everyone is like kosher and cool and gay. You know, no, some of us are adults. Um, ain't nothing free here. We want that own fans only account. Now, what is what is only fans? I don't know what the fuck that is. <laughs> I know that some some Honda tech chick was, I guess, 
you know, uh, you know, flicking her bean on camera and got fired from being a, a Honda tech, which is hilarious. She was there like, I'm replacing the fuel injection lines. <laughs> Watch my OnlyFans account. Woo! Fucking squirting all over the cam. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I guess it's basically like a Snapchat premium, basically, where it's just another medium of you just shoving your snatch in front of dudes. So... Please, guys, don't don't pay. I really need you not to pay because I don't want to feel the pressure of answering all these questions um, because I just want to hang out with you guys on a Sunday. There ain't shit going on. Yesterday, UFC 249, I think, was, was on. And thank God, it was like, holy shit, live fights. I wish they would announce the ratings of that fight because it was actually fun to watch. There was some guys just beating their sh- Listening to the guys hit each other in the face with no audience interaction was really cool. It literally hurt. Someone said monetize has nothing to do with super chat. Dude, I last time, I think you guys had trouble um, being able to pay me and I had to enable monetization. So I disabled it and it's, it, for whatever reason, um, allowed you guys to pay me, but I really don't want y'all to pay me. It wants for the news, OnlyFans is for cyber hoes. Okay, so I, I mean, I get that, I, I, I get that, but I, I <laughs> I just don't see how it's any different than anything else. Anything else. Is it just the newest one? Who the hell knows? <clears throat> um, Drew's for Sooner says, is the price right? A 2013 Grabba Blue GT Premium, 76,000 miles, has a Gen 2 short block on it. They're asking 19.5. Um, that's not bad for a Gen 2 short block, but if it's stock, I wouldn't fuck with it at all. If it's bone stock at 19,500, no. There's a guy here in Florida has like a, a car of 50,000 miles. 20,000 less miles, and he's asking 500 more bucks, $20,000. I mean, that's all. Um, so for the people that did pay, I guess I'll mention your names. Ryan Panahi, Ivan D, Ryan Panahi again to take my money. Uh, Rage, SFB, small block, small, SFB, sm, F, what's SFB? Um, say good afternoon, Mr. Clean. It is nice. It's nice. It's funny, like, when I don't, let, when I don't shave, I literally look <sighs> 10 years older. I look like shit. I mean, I look like shit anyway, but I look really bad. Uh, Philip says, thanks for you're the best. Uh, Gennaro says, hell yeah. Diaz and Alex, can you sit? Se- can I send you a video of Ken Block? I cannot stop hearing YDB T voice when he talks. When Ken Block talked, okay, when I was, you know, your douchebag, um, I literally was like, that guy's voice sounds like a stoner dude from California. And I practiced for a little while in the mirror. Go, uh, it was, hey, guys. So, you know, I pull on the brake and it goes sideways. And I totally wrecked the fiesta that my uh, sponsors got for me. Pretty sick. <laughs> I'm like, how does this guy make money? How does this guy make money? <laughs> what, mile, what mile per gallon says, any procedures to properly break in an engine? <laughs> so, okay. That, that's been another topic of conversation in the last uh, three weeks or so. Everyone is starting up their project cars. And look, there's been a bit of a beef with engine builders and tuners, all tuners, not just us. What blows my mind is how a stock engine, a stock engine that comes in a 2016, 2011, whatever, any Coyote motor, we tune it. It runs whatever number it runs, nines, eights, whatever, then they get the motor built elsewhere. Similar specs, just forged internals, maybe some cams. Then they put it back in the car with the same exact tune it rode the fuck out on. Now it has trouble starting. It has issues. The pistons scuff the walls. And then builders start blaming tuners. And I go, wait a minute. This is the exact set. You're telling me Ford... OEM engines are stronger and better built than the 17 plus thousand dollar Coyote engines you're putting in there. So how can it's the exact same tune? Why should I change anything? Oh, it's different. Why? Tell me why it's different. Do I have to fuel it differently? So the engine braking procedure, I would say defer to your to your engine builder because an engine builder would know best. But the problem is When the car was running fine all along, let's say it's running fine all along and you preemptively built it. You built it before it blew up because it would save you a lot of money. Use your existing block, sent it out, get it back. Same specs, just forged, put it in. Now it has issues. Well, the tune did not change. The programming did not change. Nothing has to change if you put all the parts back on except forged internals. 
if it changed with cams like Gen 2, we just changed a couple of things that have nothing to do with how it fuels, how it starts, how, how it does it, anything. So that's been one of those common back and forth beefs that we have had with some engine builders and you know some are easier to work with than others and some are you know some take responsibility for some of the shit that they that they did wrong others don't but if you want to know 100 percent braking procedure talk to your engine builder and if your engine builder starts talking shit on the tuner then you're going to have to decide okay this engine was running my stock engine was running fine on my car for two seasons and i preemptively had it built now you're talking shit that this tuner might not be able to tune the supposed beefed up engine, that's your call to make. I'm not going to go, you know, as to who is doing what. It's just so fucking stupid. Us poverty folk finally getting some questions answered. Exactly. I'm trying to because not everyone's looking to pay and I get that. And I appreciate the people that do support the channel, but I don't want to make it seem like I'm ignoring everyone. In the last month or so, the questions on the pay side have gone so crazy because what I see on my screen is this. I see viewer activity, and when I slam those questions that are lit up in colors, I just stay on that, and if I can't get to the quote-unquote poverty section, that's, I apologize, but just a lot of the paid questions, I, I feel responsible like they have to get, um, you know, taken care of. Um, F-150, S-550, he said, uh, I bought a Gen 3 Whipple of HL, so Dakota got mad and sent me with Nardi. No, Nardi's just, Nardi's just um, the, whatchamacallit? he's the he's the guy that needs to gather all the information in case anything changed okay so the moment you change setups i send you to nardi nardi gathers the information and goes injectors throttle body cold air iat uh, location and then once that's compiled he puts it in a nice little list and he sends it back to the tuner so he nardi's not a tuner nardi's the guy who actually is the customer service rep along with tyler and they gather all the information they can and then once the information is vetted meaning no issues, no bobo injectors, no dumbass shit. IAT is where it should be. Then it goes to a tuner. So he didn't dump you. But you bought a Gen 3 Ripple, so I guess the YDBT Edelbrock Supercharger, once it comes back ported and runs an 840 or an 830, it'll go to someone else, right? <laughs> um, Sean Gonzalez? I think he's Portuguese. Says, Alex, I want to let you know I fixed the popping sound from the cold air intake. You suggested taking the cold air intake apart, and I did, and I found a small piece of leaf in the map. <laughs> Oh, it's a tune issue. Hey, you know, I was uh, I put the tune in and the tune's the problem. Did you do anything else to the car? Well, I used my leaf blower <laughs> right in the engine bay. I used my leaf blower with the filter off and it got in the in the math. It's, it's totally, you could have seen that in the log, right? You could, uh, why didn't you see that in the log? Leaf in the in the math. But uh, glad you figured it out, Sean. <laughs> What's your position on the Israeli Palestinian conflict? Wow. Fuck me, right? Uh, I'm going to probably not answer that one, even though it's a $10 question. I believe both sides have legitimate gripes. The Palestinians were there. The problem is they weren't an actual state. They were just kind of nomads hanging out. And whoa, And the Jewish people, um, after World War II, needed somewhere to settle. And they settled, it just so happens, what to what they believe is their um, rightful land, based on biblical stuff. And the Palestinians were like, fuck that, bro. But the Palestinians didn't have anything in terms of establish anything established in terms of land rights. I know it goes back to biblical times and all this bullshit. It is way more convoluted. I don't think one is more right than the other, but I think both have legitimate gripes. So I'm not gonna uh, tell you one is right and the other one is wrong. Where did the name YDBT come from? Backstory. So again, in the late, uh, I want to say late 20, between 20, 2008 and 2012 or 13, a um, lot of stupid, I mean, more so than normal, stupid kids started buying Mustangs, <clears throat> you know, three valve owners and coyote owners. And a lot of them were just kind of like, like Ken Block, you know, like, uh, again, Ken Block's probably the nicest guy on the planet, but the way he looks makes me think he's a douchebag, flat hat, kind of like. Not well spoken. Hey, what's going to help? <laughs> uh, what do you, hey, hey, Ken? What do you think about the Palestinian uh, uh, Israeli conflict? Well, <laughs> we'll pull the e brake. <laughs> Freedom factory. <laughs> that's kind of what I think when I when I think of Ken Block. So so I go, wow, well, this guy's. And then they were wearing all these stupid hats with metal like placards on them and some of them would say yolo <laughs> y-o-l-o or like lit <laughs> and i'm like boy these guys look like yolo douchebags 
So Yola Douchebag became a character. Yola Douchebag became an ASE certified technician. Then Yola Douchebag became a tuner. And that's where it stuck. That's where it caught fire. That's where I got noticed. Bada bing, bada boom. Thoughts on Beefcake versus Lethal, God versus King. So that was actually a pretty funny thing to see. Uh, I guess Lethal, the owner Lethal, said he was the Mustang King. But I think it was taken the wrong way by Beefcake. I think he was making fun of the Tiger King. And he's like, well, I'm the Mustang King. And he's going to play off of that. He's going to make a character based off of that. But I think Beefcake was like, how dare you call yourself the Mustang King? Which plays into Lethal's. Lethal's like, oh, I actually believe it. Okay, fuck it. So they just go at each other nonstop. If I was, if I was Beefcake, I wouldn't care. But he cares. <laughs> and that's, that's what feeds the monster. You know, you, you, look, what feeds me? What feeds me? Hate. Hate. If a guy hates on me, talk shit on me is a hypocrite on shit it fuels me and i come out with more content and i talk more shit i love it i love it i love it same thing with other people like that if he knows how to get your goat he's gonna keep prodding and poking and if the other guy keeps reacting like he's, he's reacting what's to stop him i thought it was actually a pretty funny and witty thing to do Let's hear some thoughts on... Okay, Brandon Hern Hunley said, let's hear some thoughts on Beefcake versus Lethal. So I already did. Uh, saw you on the B-line the other day. Glad the car... Glad the car is Gucci and, and it was just the blower. You saw me on B-line? Maybe with the white car. The white um, 2019 uh, manual. Yeah, I was going for a cruise, man. Just just chilling. Just going for a cruise. It was bored as fuck and it was beautiful out. 18F150. Uh, Twin screw in the future. What boost level do you recommend for daily driving but still make good steam? 11 PS. Oh, Jesus. 2018, 10 to 12 PSI. I wouldn't I wouldn't go past that. For daily driver so it can last a long time and you don't smoke shit. The truck is heavy as shit. It's 5,000 pounds or so. So unless you have a regular cab. So I, I would really keep boost moderate so you don't blow the shit up. For someone who needs a paid question but hasn't gotten their stimulus check yet, $5. Denny Lee coming in clutch. Badass shit. <clears throat> um... MRLM Prez says, I like how you threw the Freedom Factory in there. Look, that guy is super successful. I'm not going to hate on him, but I'm sure as hell going to, once in a while, you know, throw some snipe, snipe from afar. <laughs> that, that place is ground zero for douchebaggery. You know, if you're going to go there and hoon and do dumb shit, that's the place to do it. And I think that's why he built it. He wanted a central location to do all his dumb shit. Smart. Instead of doing it on the street, do it somewhere legal. So that's why I, I look, it's, it's not, it's not geared towards me. That audience, that channel is not geared towards me. It's geared towards people that like burnout. Like I, burnouts are stupid unless you're actually going to, you know, a, a racetrack and do a burnout for something if you're just going to do a burnout for the sake of doing a burnout you're a fucking douchebag <clears throat> how do you feel about mustang twos more specifically king cobras you'll be tuning one soon the world's first coyote swap mustang two eh, probably the second there's been a couple i've seen not good or clean it's nasty but i think it's been done mustang twos are the ugliest pieces of shit on the planet i owned one i owned a 1978 uh mustang two cobra and i sold it uh, for 86 Mustang, and I, I owned it back in 1995. Um, the first time I ever saw this car was in the movie, Star. is it Starman? Star this, is, this was the bitch I had right here, this car. Uh, fucking, you know, ugly, ugly, tiny engine bay, just a ugly, big, stupid piece of shit Pinto, junk, fucking ugly. Look at that piece of fucking toilet. Oh, what kind of car is this? Is it a Cobra? No, it's a piece of shit. And look at this idiot. What the fuck is that? Oh my God. This is not bad. You know, it's, it's not awful. Uh, it's fucking ugly as shit, but holy, holy gay. Look at this. What a toilet, but this car sold really well because at the time there were no other muscle cars being built or anything because of the gas crisis so if you wanted a mustang you had to ride out in that tremendous piece of shit um dj smith says what's tuesday's top what's tuesday's topic i have questions but won't ask if they'll be covered um i don't know i don't know something might come up i could talk about the online beat between those two companies i could talk about a little bit of everything but stuff you know i just kind of throw shit out there but i kind of make it up as i go along and sometimes things happen over the weekend and monday and early tuesday that make me change so I wouldn't, I wouldn't really go out of your way to pay me here, really. I, this isn't the place to, to pay for anything unless you just have money burning a hole in your pocket and you just want your name mentioned. Um, 
F-150, S-550 says, yes, Alex, I couldn't pass up the deal. I really wanted the YDBT blower, but money's king. Uh, swap, swap people are cheap. I like like in your video yesterday. Exactly. Eric Parr says, uh, GT twin turbo, snap the crank snout. I'm putting a twin turbo, snap the crank snout. So let me guess, you were on the two-step like constantly. I'm putting a new Gen 3 short block in it. Any advice on how can prevent it from happening again? How did you, how, on a twin turbo car, how did you kill the crank snout? Were you on a trans brake and two-step constantly? I'll answer that question. Auto Games Nation says, what's your opinion on fast trucks? Um, has seemed to change since you were at VMP. Love the content. Keep, keep it up. Okay, so you got to understand. If I am employed by somebody, if I am employed by somebody and that employee has a fat, that employer has a fast truck. Do you think it's wise for me to say fast trucks are fucking stupid? Oh, Jesus. That's great timing, by the way. So I'm not stupid and start ragging on trucks when I work there. That would be like the dumbest shit you can do on the history of dumb shit. So what do I do? I just say, oh, fast trucks are sick. <laughs> Like, who gives two shits? But it is a very popular thing to do, to take a very big square truck and try to go fast in it. Some people like to do that shit. That's fine. That's, look, it's fine. You want to do that shit? It's fine. It'll be fine. It'll be quick. Sick. Don't care. Don't give two shits about fast trucks. What's your fuel system set up on the Fairmont? What pumps and what lines? And is it return style? Yes, Arturo, it is return style. It is dash eight feed and return it's got a magnafuel 750 actually two magnafuel 750s and recent findings have shown why it's stuttering i'll do that in a video i'll cover it once we verify that was, was the issue once the blower gets back from edelbrock and being rebuilt um send it to greg greg kong will port it it'll come back here and then i'll go ahead and send that shit um and see if the issue that we found was a problem so again two magnafuel 750s return style dash eight feed and return I could go dash 10, but it's not necessary for that car. DJ's, oh, DJ already asked that question. I uh, was curious as you or you already said that. Tyler Whitley says, here's some money for channel support. Thanks for giving us something to listen to while I'm driving my semi. But uh, shit. Yeah, it's a Texas thing. Edwin Martinez says, it's a Texas thing. Fast trucks. Uh, yeah, I get it, dude. I 100% get it. Some of the fastest trucks, some of the fastest vehicles I saw in Texas were trucks. So it's really, it's really something that I don't get. But I know it's a thing. We get a lot... I don't know what's happened in the last two months, but we are getting a lot of people that have already been tuned merging over to Lund. And I wonder what what showed up on everyone's radar. I don't think it's my channel. I really don't think I'm that big of an influence on, on the Lund racing scene. But a lot of people that are like, I got this blah, blah, blah tune. I'm tuned by blank tuning. I'm tuned by blah, blah, blah. I want to try your tune. Oh my God, it idles great. Oh my God, it shifts great. Oh my God, it went two tenths quicker. So I don't know where that's coming from. I don't know if something happened that a lot of people saw and said, let me try some of that lunch shit that made them come over. But it's interesting because I'm like, here's your flex field tune. Get on pump gas. I'm already on 85. Why are you on 85? Oh, I'm tuned by someone else. I'm like, interesting, interesting. So it's been, it's been kind of a, a funny month. Black Cobra 95 says, your old 4R car versus your old 2011 combo in the quarter, and was there anything else you wanted to do to your old 86 before you moved on? Yeah, I wanted to 408 stroker with a turbo or a, or a YS, YSI, stupid badass stuff, but I never had the money. The money was, uh, the money to build that car was ridiculous. So I was like, nah. John London, the house says, come on, Mustang 2. Um... Mike B says about the guy who broke his cranks not on his tur turbo car. He goes, he probably didn't have the dampener all the way. Um, give me a 93 race tune, says Gallo, Gallo Bravo. Um, but anyway, um, on the cars, I, I prefer my um, notch today. Today. But back then, I, I, was sick and dry I was sick and tired of driving a spooled car with 430s, no AC, gutted, my back sweating. Fuck that. The 11 had everything. AC, da da da. And it was a second and a half, almost two full seconds faster. So um, the 11 was a better car overall. It was a better vehicle. It was easier to modify. The notch just needed a whole bunch of work, a new engine. You know, just it had a, a decent Tremec 3550, which nowadays sucks. It's not that good. I mean, I would put an MT82 versus a Tremec 3550 any day. Hey, I, I put a Tremec 3550 against a TKO 500. 
I'm, oh, are you stupid? Okay, put a TKO 500, shift it at 7,500 RPM a couple times. You'll see what happens with a Tramac TKO 500. Whereas the MT82 is like, whoop, ba, 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 then the gear breaks. Would you recommend a flex wheel tune on a GT or just an E85R tune? It depends on what you want to do. If you want to just drive around and be able to pop in to a gas station and fill up on ethanol versus pump gas and just have the flexibility, aka the flex tune, of running both and having a little bit little of extra timing, then that's fine. If you have available the availability of E85 anywhere all the time, I would just roll out on an E85R tune in my opinion, in my most humble of opinion. A lot of people here saying they used to own Mustang 2s. Yeah, that, that car is still very available. It's weird how Fairmont's, and again, not because of me. I just think it's because people found out, oh, that's a Fox body, and it's ugly, and you can put an LS, a, a Coyote, a small block Ford in it, and basically the same exact parts as a Mustang, but it's different, but it's still a Fox body. It became desirable. So all of a sudden, during drag week, you saw four-door four four door Fairmont's. You saw um thunderbirds old thunderbirds late 80s thunderbirds getting after it. again it's a fox body M M lincoln lsc's not that much but i thought it was um interesting that fairmont's became sought after i think the mustang 2 will eventually become that redheaded stepchild that people will learn to love if the market supports it if coyote swaps become a thing that car is ugly but it has decent bones meaning it, it has the potential of being something but the thing is it's so ugly it, it'll require a visionary to drop it widen it make it cool and then all of a sudden people will want to do that so you need somebody to get the ball rolling that, that that's what is going to happen in my opinion <clears throat> coyote coop says hey alex i'm assuming pro charge cj combo would be rape would rape on the top end but the curve would be steep and no bottom end or mid-range you'd be right anything with a cj intake turbo centrifugal anything is going to have almost no bottom end if I was to put a CJ on this guy with, say, a 5.2 Voodoo motor, I'd have to get a converter that, like, I could trans break it up to 6,000 RPMs because it's not going to do a goddamn thing under that. It's going to be okay, but I'd have to launch it, like, at 5,800 to 6,000 RPMs on a trans break to get out and then it live really high in the RPM range. So, yeah, you're going to have not much down low with a centrifugal. And do not put a torque booster in a centrifugal. It is a waste of time. It's stupid. If you want bottom end, get a TVS or a Whipple, and you'll be a happy guy. Haik Boyadon says, what's up, Alex? I know you don't care much about turbos. What brand turbo do you go? Borg Warner, Garrett, Precision. Now, someone gave me uh, an analogy of what turbos versus car manufacturers is like like what is a high-end turbo what is a very well-known turbo like precision people go precision is the best not necessarily according to turbo guys they're the most available they're the most visible it's like ls swap mustangs it's like here it is you know visible this is what you should get so everyone goes precision 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 whereas garrett and borg warners um seem to be a little bit better quality I don't know if there's many configurations. Uh, I know bullseye turbos are well sought after, but I think the precision turbos are like the Chevy 350 of the turbo world. They're everywhere. You can get them in many configurations. They, they do the job. They are very good. Um, but in terms of quality and what turbo guys think of them, I don't think they think the precision is the best. I think it's the most available, the most visible brand, and the one that probably comes in more configurations. But again, I'm not a turbo guy, so I... I I'm not the authority on anything uh, than tur turbos, even less so. <clears throat> Tyler Whitley says, um, okay, you already said that about driving a semi. Um, Jaden Larson says, decided to build my three valve after PBH's harness is delayed because of Rona. I make the, uh, I want to make the front suspension tubular. The only company that makes 05 to 09s is that red company. Are they really bad? How about UPR? UPRK members fit any S197. Call UPR. Also, if I'm not mistaken, Team Z also makes S197 front K members. Hit them up. See, a lot of people think Facebook is Google. Like, they go to Facebook and they get all their information from Facebook. You know what's good about Facebook is you can tell who's full of shit and who's not. Forget car companies. I'm saying just people in general, especially with this COVID-19 stuff. You know how many people I just blocked and unfriended after some of this dumb shit they were posting? Because I don't want to see it up on my wall. I don't want to see any of your dumb shit up on my wall if I disagree vehemently with the shit that you're putting up there. Unfriend, 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 block, 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 fuck all y'all. And it's nice. Now what I see is just car shit, funny jokes, memes, and women's asses. I'm like, thank God. Thank God. 
Okay, Diaz AD GT says, Alex, I have a 19 GT with an MT82. I deleted the resonator and the car's doing a rattling sound in low RPMs. <laughs> so, so maybe there's something inside your exhaust, <laughs> like a bolt or something that you left in the mufflers. Because if you deleted the resonator, you probably cut something and something got in the exhaust. Think about it. Think about it. Something is rattling in your exhaust. There's probably a bolt in there. So hopefully you clamped it and didn't weld it and you'd be able to take it out and see if there's anything in there blow some compressed air in there and see if you can get it out of there hopefully it's not in your mufflers already because if it's in your mufflers you're fucked um brian morales says alex if you get offered a whole day to race and get your opinion of the freedom factory would you your car of choice whatever they have to offer no no um i i'm not again i don't i don't dislike those people those guys are great they have a great brand and a killer channel I don't care about anything that goes on over there. If they're like, hey, Alex, do you want to race? No, I don't care about oval stuff. I don't care about drifting. My thing is mostly, I wish there was like a time attack situation where you have to do like a segment of of a track or a street, like like they do rally racing. I wish there was something like that for like, like Australian supercars. That to me is like so fucking cool. Those V8 rear wheel drive, body kitted up sequential trans and i wish they did like time attack stuff not cones in a parking lot because that's fucking gay but what i'm saying is like like a section of street almost like like if you want if you play the game gran turismo if you play the game gran turismo you get license runs and in there they tell you to do like sections of let's say laguna seca sections of um the nerd burg ring and they you you take a time attack thing instead of just going round and round and round and round and round that to me it's it's not fun to watch unless someone is crashing cuz guess what when i watch nascar or when i watch any kind of those roundy round races i don't watch it to to see who's who's the best team i watch to see where the biggest crash is going to be um so I, I now which ones do I watch the most in terms of NASCAR races? The road races. I watch the road races. That to me is so cool and so full of driver skill. But I really don't have any interest in, in going to the Freedom Factory and racing anything up there at all. I just, I hope, I wish those guys luck. I just don't care. Matt760, my fucking email's full of requests for people. Uh, can I get the Matt760 tune? You mean the tune I sent you? No, 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 the one with drag mode enabled. Yeah, the tune I sent you, the bass file. No, 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 the special one you gave him. The one I gave you is the one I gave him and everybody. His car, for whatever reason, just really likes it. Ugh. You know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start naming every file drag mode. I'm going to name every file drag mode just so everyone can shut the fuck up. I'm like, here's a drag mode tune. Oh, and it's a placebo effect. Maybe they want a reliable, safe, and fast tune. You know, you're right, Matt760. The people that have been coming over have been people that complain about drivability, complain about how the car runs and drives the moment they put our tune in it. And they're like, Jesus Christ, it idles so good. I thought it was a mechanical issue. And my last tuner were saying the throttle body was fucked up or this or this or that. So it's interesting to see them come through and, and, and get their opinion on our calibration. Alejandro Gomez says, hey, bitch, what's the best way to contact you about cams? Support at LundRacing.com. Support at LundRacing.com. Don't hit me up on Facebook, YouTube. Don't hit me up anywhere because I'm not going to talk about work unless I'm getting paid to talk about work, aka this, or support at LundRacing.com. That's the only place I talk about work is at work, support at LundRacing.com. Could you imagine if you're a roofer and someone is hitting you up about roofing after you've roofed all day? You've done your roofing job. You're fucking tired. You sit down. You put your feet up. And then someone goes, hey, how many nails per shingle do you normally put on? And what kind of nail? What's the best nail gun? How much pressure do you run in your nail gun? What's the best type? What's the best way? What's the best flashing? What's the best technique of cutting the aluminum for flashing corners? You want to kill yourself. You're like, you know what? Why don't you just pay me to roof your shit? <laughs> Same thing with tuning. Ryan Panahi says, 700 rear wheel horsepower on a Paxton right now. 800 is the goal. What up, pump gear should I have? Also, which clutch? Clutch. I only roll race. Houston. Um, You get yourself MMR or TSS oil pump gears. Period. Nothing else. And... <laughs> and... Um, 800 wheel, E85 and a 3.3 pulley. Should do it. <laughs> Uh, Alex, what do you think about the future of modding cars will look like as they turn more into electric motors for performance cars? Here's a little extra cash for the extra stream. Thank you, Stephen Kiefer. I think what's going to happen in the future is hybrid technology is going to take over. Guys, trust me, Corvette is going to do it first. 
Corvette's going to do it first. Corvette is going to come out with a dual overhead cam, flat plane crank, twin turbo Corvette real soon. Probably be the ZR1. The Z06, I don't know exactly how they're going to do it, but the ZR1 is going to be $130,000, maybe more. And it's going to have twin turbos. It's going to have flat plane cranks. It's going to rev the fucking 8,000 hours. You hop up, fucking flame come out the bitch and on a shift. And then they're going to say, let's put, because it's already rear drive. So they have all the front to do some work with. They can probably put a motor, a hybrid motor in the front, make it similar to like the McLarens that are hybrids, the Porsches that are hybrids, and they're going to be at another class. And I think that's the future. Whereas Mustang will be very delayed to give you that. They'll probably give you an all wheel drive Coyote Mustang. Then they're going to give you a twin turbo EcoBoost hybrid Mustang as a option because I think it'll probably be, if it's going to be Coyote, I'm thinking GT500 or some kind of Shelby or some higher end Mustang will have a Coyote with all wheel drive. Twin turbo 3.5 EcoBoost because if you get in a new Raptor, that bitch rapes. So you, you can make that sucker fast. So I think a twin turbo hybrid car is not that far away. It's just a lot of people. Look, if, if people accepted an ugly sounding piece of shit 2.3 two, two, EcoBoost Mustang, kids, I think the general public will accept a 3.5 EcoBoost Mustang that makes 600 horsepower hybrid and gets 25 to 30 miles a gallon. Abso- I'll do it. I'll buy a twin turbo all wheel drive hybrid Mustang in a heartbeat. But Corvette will probably have it first. They'll probably have just badass shit first because they can. And Chevy seems to be a little ahead of the game in terms of that kind of technology, giving it to the to the general public. Um, but it'll be in a hundred thirty thousand dollar Corvette as opposed to a sixty to fifty fifty to sixty thousand dollar Mustang. That'll be interesting. I give it about three to five years before you start seeing hybrid technology come through. I don't think Mustang will ever go full electric until there's like a demand for it or high, uh, the electric technology takes a crazy leap forward. Actually, it was really nice to see Elon Musk say to California, fuck you, California. I'm going to fucking Texas. That would be the smartest thing. Elon Musk is a genius, obviously. That would be the smartest thing he could ever do in history is leave California. Because now even Elon Musk, who's borderline hippie-ish, but really smart. Look, he's basically Tony Stark. If even he says, fuck you, California, you're not allowing my business to thrive because you're on this dumb shit locking everyone in until it goes away guys this covid shit ain't going away once fall comes through you'll see a second wave people start getting to get the fuck out there and start doing shit whoever's gonna get sick is gonna get sick big i mean hopefully your immune system isn't jacked and you'll be okay but even elon musk is like we got to get to work this is bullshit so he's probably gonna move to texas that would be the smartest thing he could do ever and you will see a mass exodus of companies leaving california california is already a shithole it's already not all of california look i i apologize if you live in those parts of california that are probably right-leaning in the country beautiful quiet but unfortunately the cities in the southern part are taking over all of the bullshit in california and it is in my opinion it is your job to tell those guys to shut the fuck up and start acting right, but it's not happening. So I hope there's a mass exodus of companies leaving California, and I hope Tesla is one of them. That will lower the price of the Tesla because manufacturing costs will be lower. Why? Because Texas is very friendly to businesses. Hey, John Lund says, we miss you up north. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Miss you guys. I know you guys have been having a lot of uh, stuff going on up there. Don't forget to ship my wheels, John, because, um, you know, I need my wheels. <laughs> Just to remind you, put them on a pallet. Let's go. Alex, when do you think the crank support becomes necessary on a VMP supercharged Coyote? In my opinion, anything, um, the moment you got to do like a 15% and like a 72 millimeter pulley, anything around that range, anytime you put a overdriven, you know, a overdrive on the bottom, And a small pulley up top. If you do a 20% and like a 90 millimeter, which is a weird fucking combo anyway, I don't think you need it. But once you get into the big boy range, I don't think it's necessary. I just think it's a good idea to have it on because you're just stressing everything out a little bit more than you normally would have. So in my opinion, anytime you put like an overdriven crank 
uh, dampener and uh, an overdrive and like uh, anything under a 72 millimeter pulley uh, in any configuration 2.3 26.50 gen 3 gen 3 r it doesn't matter i think you should put a crank support in that sucker and get it from main force performance australia mfp devin marth says 17 gt mt82 and a 350 manifold cooks long tubes and green catted headers <laughs> i want cams but can't decide between ellen amber comp cams stage three any thoughts i don't think you have any issues with either um i lean towards the comp cams only because it's a tried and true combo not to say lnm isn't but i've had more cars make good power on comp cam stage threes based on their just their popularity lnms are probably fine i just have not had a lot of experience on them but i i think a lot of them have made good good power on boosted cars i just haven't seen a lot of them naturally aspirated that make a lot of power yolo i watch every episode and they're all bad thanks for the content <laughs> thanks Stu boys keith barrio says why is it why is it that people that start off with century superchargers always change the turbos it never fails they buy the century and a couple months later they change they, they change for a turbo kit not just that but check this out um uh, keith barrios this is the evolution of a coyote guy uh Full bolt-on, which basically is an intake, long tubes, and cold air. That's what they think full bolt-on is. To me, full bolt-on means everything but boost. Jesus. Everything but boost. So what does that mean? Cams, Cobra Jet, cold air, long tubes, and badass fuel, injectors, boosted pump. That, to me, is full bolt-on. Um, but a lot of people, like, full bolt-on is a boss intake and a CNL racer. I'm like, okay, whatever. Then they get a nitrous kit. And I'm like, Dude, dude, I love nitrous as a supplemental thing. I don't love nitrous as a main power adder. It just, it's just not there. I know some guys are like Danny. I think Danny Jimenez is out there gapping people with like a 100, 150 shot. But I, I just don't think that's something long term that's going to be good for you as Cuban Coyote. And I think with boost, the car will last longer, will make way more power than a 150 shot. And it'll be uh, basically up to us as long as the boost is fine, as long as you're not over boosting. Because with nitrous, you can have too high a bottle pressure. You can have not enough bottle pressure. You can have bad gas. You can activate it too early, not deactivate it uh, early enough. There's a lot of things that can happen with nitrous because it's on the end user. Nader Saleh says, how much power can I make on Gen 1 Coyote with manly, Owisco, pistons, and rods? And he, and he spelled manly, M-A-N-L-Y, like manly. Um, Nader, if you have manly rod, bottom end, a bicycle piston, 11-1 compression, and a stock sleeve, I would not go more than 900 maybe 950 rear wheel horse power because of the sleeve the sleeve is going to be the problem the problem is going to be the sleeves because eventually you're going to run into gasket issues and maybe burn up the sleeve <laughs> so i i treat it like an illuminator an illuminator i wouldn't go past a thousand rear wheel horsepower not because of anything in particular but you know once you're boosting that high on stock sleeves that that block if you ever saw like an internal image of what the pistons are doing or the cylinders are doing they're doing all this crazy contortion that you wouldn't think would actually be happening you're like oh they totally stay around my ass they do all this bunch of shit so i really wouldn't push that motor past uh, 900 or so rear horsepower where do i buy transition fuel <laughs> do you know I, I, oh my god so we had a guy. I had a guy. Uh, well, let me get some of these guys here. Okay, very happy with the tune. Gap the similar local Dino Tune Coyote many times in a row. Alexander Rocca, thank you. So where do I buy transition fuel? Great question. I had a guy tell me, Alex, can I get an E30 tune? And I'm like, excuse me? Oh, yeah. An E30 tune? What do you mean? Well, I went to the gas station, and it says 87 octane, E85, E30. So I'm like, well, I'm going to get E30 because E30 is better than... No. What do you think the 70% is? What do you think the other 70% of the fuel in E30 gas is? E30 to me is meant for grandma flex vehicles, right? Because it's a little cheaper. It's probably 87 octane-ish, but cheaper. Cheaper than 87 octane. 87 octane, let's say, is 210, then E30 is like 190. And you're like, oh, I'm going to fill up with E30. And you're like, oh, it's it's 30% ethanol. Well, do you think the other 70% is 93 octane? 
No, fuck no, because then that would that would cost you what 93 octane costs plus 30% ethanol. So it'd probably be a, a bit of an expensive fuel, probably somewhere in between 91 and 93 in terms of cost. But you're like, oh, it's the cheap. It's, it's, <laughs> I got an EcoBoost Mustang and I want E30. E30? I'd rather you use 93 octane because it's E10. Do you guys know what that means? Do you guys know what that means? 93 octane is 10% ethanol. 87 octane is 10%, 10% ethanol. Pump gas, unless it says no ethanol on it, is all 10% ethanol. So when you get E30, that doesn't mean the rest of it is 93. That means the rest of it is chocolate milk and it's cheap. So that's the transition fuel we were talking about, brother. Uh, how can I get YOLO or LUN stickers? I don't have any. Actually, if you want YOLO stickers, you go to Teespring YDBT. Guys, I mean, if you want merch, I, I don't push it that often because I think it's, you know, it's, I don't know, self-serving. And I just don't really want to just constantly blow it up all the freaking time. Let me look at my store. If you guys want actual merch and you want shirts, like I got shirts here, but these are an old run. I have like, oh, 200, but I don't ship them out because it, I was making no money shipping anything. I was literally giving the shirts away for 20 bucks. 20 bucks, literally, time, effort, postage, I was giving shit away. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to start a Teespring campaign, let you do it, and then you can go from there. I just wasn't about to, I just wasn't about to, um, you know, go through the time and effort. I don't even know where the fuck my page is. Let me see, storefronts. <clears throat> so if you go to teespring.com, YDBT or something like that, um, <clears throat> let me see, where is it? Da, 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 da. Overview, payout promotion, where is it? Is it overview? I don't even know where the fuck my store is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything. <laughs> oh, view store. There we go. I'm the worst. Oh my God. I, I'm like tech stupid so yeah if you want apparel you go to here ydbt teespring.com stores apparel and you can get a hat a mug a stupid sticker with my face on it a phone case other shirts socks tank tops different color shirts different color sweaters if you want to get your girl some of the the worst quality leggings on the planet like i'm telling you the quality is absolute garbage but it says my shit on it just like that you can get a hoodie and you can get the snack pack 500 shirts the 2020 snack pack 500 in all these wonderful colors because it's a fat pig <laughs> so yeah there you go i mean if you want if you want apparel just get it there jesus Tommy Gunn gave me 20 bucks for no reason. I appreciate that. Um, Eric Vega says, Coño, missed you Tuesday, but here's my appreciation for the help at an inconvenience for you. My new PCM took the tune without unlocking. Ran the car last night and set a new best, even my worst 60-foot badass Eric Vega glass week. Glad we could help you out. Um... Patrick Martin, holy shit, give me 50 bucks. I appreciate that. He says, will Lund ever expand into tuning LS and Hemi platforms? I swapped, I have a swapped cam only LS2, cam only LS2. So that means it's got nitrous, five turbos, three superchargers, and 15 cams. In a 72 pickup truck, and have not found someone who can nail drivability down. Every loan tune I've had has been excellent, and I appreciate all you do for the community. Patrick Martin. Funny thing about LS tuning. So I asked a guy who was deep, I'm saying deep in the LS tuning and the LS community. He's not a tuner. He's a parts provider, has a bunch of LS tuned vehicles. And I looked at him and I said, is there any company out there that you recommend that is as similar as to Lund, like that, that does LS and Mopars? And he looked at me and he goes, nobody. I said, what do you mean? He goes, no, he, he, he actually like looked up in the, he's like, nobody, like nobody. Like, I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, nobody is good. Everyone is sucking off everyone's tunes. Some guys adjusting this, some guys adjusting that, some guys making fun of this guy's tune. But in terms of drivability, nailing it, nailing it, nailing it, he doesn't think there's a market for someone like Lund. Number one, we're going to charge for our work. And unfortunately, Patrick, a lot of you LS guys are cheap as fuck, right? You're cheap. Would you pay $650 for a remote session? Would you pay $650 for a remote session? Oh, fuck that. I'll just get me HP tuners credits and say fuck that because my buddy. And you know what? These LSs run real good on Bobo shit ass tunes. They just somehow work, you know? And with us, we'll just have a more refined tune, better drivability, startup is, you know, we're just going to take care of all those little issues. And dude, people don't want to pay for that, especially LS guys. They just don't want to pay for that shit. 
but I don't think there's anything that we're going to do to branch off. We are so busy with Mustang, again, so busy with Mustang, that I don't think we're going to open a whole new platform because we'd have to hire, what, 12 more guys? No, no, it's not going to happen. Time Attack is non-existent of Canada, unfortunately. Could you imagine Time Attack shit? Like Australian supercars, and you got to go like a rally from here to there. Let's say it takes you about a minute and a half. I mean, U-turns, standing start, you know, maybe you got to drift a couple of corners to get through them properly, like a badass S-turn that you can get creative with, badass stuff like that. I, I envision, I envision my old neighborhood in Holyoke, Massachusetts, going down Sargent Street, taking a right on Main Street, then taking a right on Cabot. And going up Cabot, taking another ride at Maple, it has so many bumps and S-turns and crazy shits. And I'm like, that would be so, if you can just put Jersey barriers up and just do time attack shit, just like a square. But it has in the middle of each square, there's a bunch of crazy shit. I thought starting from City Hall, take a right down, down, um, I forget the name, that Lyman? Lyman Street, then a right on Main Street, a right on Sargent, maybe a left on Maple and a left, <laughs> oh my god, it'd be unreal, it'd be, it'd be the fucking coolest shit ever, good luck making that happen anywhere, oh, you should do it, Alex, yeah, okay, yeah, well, no, I'm good, I'm good, but that would be the coolest thing to me, like a rally race on asphalt, unlimited class horsepower, whatever you got, big wings, big tires, no limits, baddest motherfucker gets it, about a minute and a half, probably big crashes, because they missed turns, be so fun it's like the isle of man but for like australian supercar style cars has to be v8 has to be rear wheel drive whatever trans goes whatever tire goes whatever motor goes turbo super oh my god it'd be so fucking badass but we gotta deal with drifting and circle car shit here in the united states dumbass shit taylor y says rouse charge s197 uh tuned by me would you, what would your next mod be? A converter or a return style system for E85? A return style system for E85 because when, then we can boost more, you know, get more boost in the car and the converter will be less necessary. But I think eventually, if you want to 60 foot the shit out of the car, a converter is your, your uh, eventually you're going to have to get a converter. But for right now, I do E85 first, if, if that's of those two options. Youngster1320 says, I just went 11 to my EV Model 3 trying to go tans. Damn. <laughs> what tires do you recommend for track and daily use? Um... I think the Nitto G2, not the G2s, but the Nitto, the new Nitto drag radials seem to be pretty, pretty awesome. Um, I'm saying for track and daily, but is the Eve, is the Youngster 1320, is the EV Model 3 all-wheel drive? Let me see. EV Model 3, EV Model. I'm sure it is. Is it all-wheel drive? All-wheel drive. I'm going to answer my own question because there's a delay, so. <clears throat> Yep, it, it, the dual motor version is all-wheel drive, so I'm sure he has a dual motor version. So, yeah, um, shit, you can probably do anything, like a Continental uh, or something like that. Like, a, like a, um, what's the other one, the badass tire that comes in Porsches? Oh, fuck, I don't know. Or you can do an R888 if you want to just make a bunch of noise and, and look baller. Um, but honestly, I wouldn't go crazy if it's an all-wheel drive. Even the stock tire seems to be pretty good, right? Unless you're having issues spinning that Model 3, which you shouldn't on that car. Or you do four ET Street SSs. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i roll i do sticky ass shit and forget about uh, durability later dude hill climb shit is the bomb roto 12 dude could you imagine could you imagine there's a video out there of a fox body fox body hill climb i'll get to the paid questions first uh later but i want to show you ah oh, fuck fox body hill climb yeah this fucking thing Oof, this motherfucker when I saw this, I was like, oh, yeah, this is the shit right here. I don't think you'll be able to get sound, but we'll see what we can do. Oh, come on. Let's get with it. Fuck me. Stop the intros. Look at that. Mm, take that, motherfucker. Look at that. Let's full screen that bitch. Yeah. Oh, but that's drifting, Alex. Eh, kind of. <laughs> but it's cooler because he's going up a hill, actually. Uh, he's, he, I think he's showing off. Pull the e-brake. Bah, bah, bah. Alex, that's drifting. Yeah. But it is not judged. It is timed. <laughs> Drifting is judged like ballerina dancing. Or ba uh, what, what do you call it? Um, uh, what the fuck's the name of that shit? Um, 
ice skating, <laughs> figure skating. Look at that. Man, that's badass shit. Ah, fuck me. You know, that'll never come to the U.S. It'll be some dumbass shit. We'll be, we'll be, you know, sucking dick for, for drifters. Fuck all that. <clears throat> um, Hike Boy Down says, there's that Russian accent I wanted from you last time, but you mentioned FBO for being NA. What about other cars that are stocked with a little boost like Evo's? Stock with a little boost like Evo's? Hike, you got to be more specific. I, maybe I don't remember the last conversation. I've answered like 15 questions since then, so it's a little tough. Uh, the Danimal, 2019, 219 says, ask what do you think about the crank support becomes necessary or VMP supercharged car? I already answered that question. So that's a massive delay there. TT Minion Racing in the house. Nice for uh, you to tune in. I think I might do some talking shit on Sundays, but the problem is once football comes back, once all that shit comes back, you guys aren't going to watch me. That's why I picked Tuesday. There ain't shit going on on Tuesdays. But now there ain't shit going on, so I just do it now. Revive uh, gave me 20 bucks, and he said, looking for a daily and learning towards a, leaning towards a 2015 and up Coyote F-150. If I decide to put a supercharger on and keep it on 650 wheel, will the stock 6 already last? <sighs> At that weight, probably not. You're going to have to put clutches in eventually, depending on how much you beat the shit out of it. Six, if I keep it around 650 wheel, that's a lot of horsepower, dude. That's a lot of horsepower for a truck. And it's pushing a, a 5,000 pound truck, especially if it's a super crew or whatever the fuck they call them. That's a lot of fucking truck. And that trains and clutches are going to hate life. So I don't think it's going to last that long at that horsepower level. I would upgrade it if I were you at that horsepower level. Eric Vegas says, I got to relearn the car again. Driver mod. I couldn't get the car in a buy supply in time, and I ran a 555R. Pets to slip the clutch. Snapped an axle. Tint on leaving the line after buy supplies. Dump or slip. Buy supplies, you do a dump. But again, the clutch is your fuse. The clutch is your fuse. If you have like an RXT, an on-off switch clutch, or like Exedi Stage 1 Fuck, I hate that clutch. It's such a piece of shit clutch. It, to me, sorry, Exedi. I don't like any of your clutches at all. Sorry. It's just like on, off, on, off. There is no slip built in. So I, that's why I like the, when I, when I, when people recommend me a an NA clutch, I say get like a McLeod RST. But Alex, it's organic material. It doesn't grip that good. Exactly. I want you to have a little slip so your shit doesn't explode. It all, I only got one season out of it. How many times did you go racing? 45 times. That's about right. So the clutch is your fuse, but on a buy supply, I dump it. it. But it all depends on your clutch setup, dude. It all depends on your clutch setup. Uh, Dan Adamzik says, I got a 12 GT500 with a ported Gen 2R and a 2.4 upper and LN LNM cams, 267 throttle body, FICs, BAP, about to order a Luntune. How do I run 85 without return style fuel system? On the 2012 return style fuel system, I just had a guy put in a Deechworks hat with like twin 340s, and it was good enough but again, his lines were, were going to be an issue. Not necessarily an issue, but man, I want headroom. I want safety. I want headroom. And don't be cheap. You have a GT500, a Shelby GT500, where at the time it was top dog Mustang. Treat it right. Get it for innovations, return style, fuel system for it. What's your OnlyFans handle? <laughs> what would be my OnlyFans handle if I did have one? Um, thanks for clearing that up. I'll go with UPR then. I can't wait to gap some of the coyotes with the three valve. Love the content. Keep it up. Thank you, Jaden. Eric said, hey, you, and gave me $2, which is like a super chat sticker, which is really gay. Do you feel the same way about 11 to 14 GT500 blocks staying under a thousand? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Thomas Poopis. Poopis. Poopy. Poopwa. Is it Poopwa? Popa. Poopy. Uh, Thomas Poopy. Um, yeah. 850 max on any Shelby. Oh, but this buddy got 930 out of it. Congratulations. I want to make sure your shit stays inside the block, not make a window on it. And then you got to go buy, buy some curtains at Ross. So I would definitely stay in the 850 range because 11 to 14 GT500s max. You can make more on a Coyote a little safer. Coyotes just make more power, period. Sorry, guys. Sorry if you're Shelby fans. But uh, Gen 2 Coyote, I can, I'm can. i super comfortable at 850, even 900 wheel. Whereas a GT500, I'm going, holy shit, it can go at any time. Uh, Thrasher Dasher 688 says, I have running 85 on my stock 18 F-150 EcoBoost and run low 13s 2160 foot. Would like to see PBH shop truck 27985 on the dyno. They don't have a shop truck. Someone that works at PBH has one, but they don't have a shop truck. And there is literally no market for the 27 F-150 performance market. Yeah, there is. I saw this guy put turbos in. He put two precisions in. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. When it comes to performance market, we mean volume where you can make money. That's right. 
we're in the business of making money. So if you don't have a massive market that people are willing to spend money on, no one's going to chase that shit. So that's why there aren't that many return self fuel systems on the market. There aren't that many performance parts on the market because 90% of the people that get a 2.7 EcoBoost F-150 do truck things in it like get plywood, you know, take the family out somewhere, tow a small boat to the, you know, that's what trucks are meant to do. But the performance market, people get a coyote. Sorry if it's bad news, but it's the truth. <clears throat> uh gap garage says something he said look up pat g for ls tuning again i this guy knows everybody and he said nobody's nobody's like like lund that was the example i put out there is anyone like lund and he's like nobody <clears throat> cedric white says alice damn seeing you again this week heck yeah like uh i quick question how do you feel about 680 combo with a 347 how 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 are you going to control it? How are you going to control 680? Oh, US shift. Look, I'm going to go out there and say it. That shit don't work. Unless you're manually shifting it. That shit don't work. Unless you're manually shifting it. More burnt up clutches, more tuning issues have come up with the US shift, the quick six, than anything else I've ever seen in my life. So if you have a 347 small block board and you're going to custom make a bell housing, to fit the small block Ford, then you got to control the trans and you're going to hope that a quick six does it unless you're manually, if you see a guy with a quick six controller and he's manually shifting it to go down the track, then the controller's bunkus, right? It's junk. It's not controlling it like it should. It's got to see throttle position. Do you know how many things are in a calibration to make sure a 6R80 performs well? The Ford calibration is so intense. It's like a huge, it's like a deck of cards on a deck of cards on a deck of cards. So many different shift schedules, so many different things happening in the background that this little blue box is not going to be able to do it. I'm sorry. It's going to be able to say shift at this RPM or you're going to manually shift it. Why get a 6R80 if you then have to manually put it in gear? That doesn't make sense to me. So in my opinion, I don't know how the fuck you're going to control it unless you're making a Coyote computer control a 347 which technically is possible if you get if you get really creative. But man, phew, good luck. You have an uphill battle. Thanks, I'll do that. Mantic or organic blessings. Thank you very much, uh, Eric Vega. And it's a pretty window, Awaken Evil says. <laughs> okay, um, back on the peasant stuff. Again, stop paying me, guys. I just want to do peasant stuff. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Alex Cadell says, could I possibly install head studs at a time and be fine? I'll be fine. Or take the heads off and do it. Um, I would take the heads off and do it properly, in my opinion. Um, I can't give you a pro or con of doing it after the fact, but I want to make sure that you're cinching that sucker down real good. And I don't know, I don't know, some people, some people might say it's fine. So what I'm going to tell you, Alex, is probably talk to an engine builder. <sighs> Call me crazy, but... In the millwright field, whenever a pump had to come apart, because look, it's a pump, and we had to stud it based on additional pressure, because before it used to have bolts, so then we decided to put studs in it. There was a there was a way of cinching it down from the center, and because there's twist, right? There's there's you know from the top to the bottom in the millwright field. This is the way I think about it. When you start twisting the top, the bottom, you know, there's going to be some flex on the bolt. So if you can only get it from the top. And get a certain torque spec up there. I guarantee that if you get it from the center or the bottom, or if you double nut it and grab it from the middle, you'll probably get a better torque spec closer to the bottom than of the top. But when it comes to car engines, it might be totally different. I might be way off on that. So Alex, I would call it like L and M or someone like that and see if they can answer your question. But I'm just going by my millwright brain, and I'm like, I'd probably take the heads off if I could. Watch the twin turbo S550 running Pike's Peak. Okay, twin turbo S550 Pike's Peak. <clears throat> that to me is so fucking cool. Um, but is it badass? Oh no, I don't want to see Jim Connor. Jim Connor. Oh, watch me, uh, Jim Connor. No, no, shut up. Let me see this thing that he's talking about. I said it. Twin turbo S550 Pike's Peak. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, internet connection. It doesn't help that I'm streaming at the same time. The fact that it actually even works blows my mind. That's why I pay $140 in internet. 
fees. Ooh, look at this. Hoo choo choo, hoo choo choo, ba 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 ba. Come on, get it. Ah, uh, I want to. I want to see him almost crash. This is actually boring. Nah, yeah, see, I'm bored. This is boring. So sorry, that's boring. Um, when I want like track attack, what, like like time attack shit, I want people. I want people to like almost die. So I want to see like um, in a, like a city. So I'm just typing in like city rally racing. Let me see. Rally racing. Let's go to videos real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Rally car races through series of. Oh no, that's probably Jim Connor shit. Dumb shit. Guan Mexico. Mexico has cities. <laughs> oh, here we go. What's up with this? I'm probably gonna get banned from play for paying playing their shit. Oh yeah, just like that. Jersey barriers. Dumb shit. Yep. Not, I mean, not wet though. Just keep the street dry. Cut the shit out with the wet shit. Unless it rained that day. But I think they sometimes they do that on purpose to get the cars to slip. Oh yeah, come on. Mm. Yeah, dude, just like that. Dumb shit. But V8, V8, rear wheel drive. Do whatever the hell you want. Ah, oh, come on. This is okay. This is boring now. See, this is that see, again. That's really stupid. <laughs> okay, I mean something similar to that. But imagine V8 cars doing it around the city somewhere instead of that. That was kind of game boring. Sorry about that. Sorry to bore you guys on that bullshit. Woo choo choo choo. Yeah, someone's saying Stan Crazy says woo choo choo. Hi Alex, I have a 13 Coyote and 85 R tune, 18 manifold and PMAS cold air intake with stage three cams, long tubes, free flowing exhaust. How much horsepower you think? 440, 450 tops. Oh what the fuck, man! The, the, the bullshit, man. Yeah, 440, 450 tops. That's about right. Uh, the highest horsepower Gen One I've ever seen was uh, Jeremiah Camps, and it was like 480 Cobra Jet cams. Um, FTW fuel. That was, I think, a big factor too. I have a 17 GT and I'm debating between the 85R and FFE headers. What's your choice? I would do free flowing exhaust and headers on 93 because sometimes you can get real sweet 93 and it performs really well um, than an E85R tune and stock stock mufflers or stock exhaust. 5 o Shirley says, what up, brother? Thoughts on why you think my car has been running lean at idle other than the pump and that O2. That's, do that, uh, 5 o Shirley, I think if, if I'm not mistaken... Um, the car was fine at first, then it wasn't. And I thought, I don't know if you were the guy that had the Dietrich 400 pump. One guy had a Dietrich 400 pump and inside the, the, the hat itself, the, the pump has a little tube and the tube came off slightly. And it was basically pumping back into the tank and giving the car just enough fuel to stay running, but show crazy lean. So it looked like it was fuel delivery. Um, in my opinion, um, but I, I, Fabio Shirley, I don't know off the top of my head. I don't remember because there's like 15 guys that had fuel delivery issues last week. And every single one, it, it was a fuel delivery issue, meaning it was the pump or a massive vacuum leak. Carlos Figueroa says, well, a 17350 with a Vortec headers and 93 makes 700 rear wheel horsepower. Yes, sir. Absolutely. No problem. Like at low ass boost because the 350s at 12 to 1 compression and they just make horsepower at 8,000 RPMs. I had one on pump gas make like 720. And the other day, there was a guy with a pump gas, a Gen 5, um, Gen 5, actually Brent Speed, Brent Speed did it. So look out on the Brent Speed channel. It's a, it should be a, a Gen 5 GT350 on Torco, made 800 and like something, 810 or 815 on pump gas and Torco. That's what he wanted. That's what he got. 93 versus E85, Nick Lovelace asks. 17 Whipple Mustang, MTD2, Dietrich 95 injectors, free flowing exhaust. Booster pump, 722, Luntune. Mostly driven on the street for fun. Pros are switching to 85. There is no real pro unless you want to make more horsepower and up the boost. If you're happy at 720 wheel, leave it at 720 wheel. DFY says, when do you need valve springs on a twin turbo Gen 2? Depending on your turbo kit. <laughs> I've seen turbo kits. I'm not going to name names. But... At low boost, require springs based on back pressure. Back pressure is causing an issue, and they were they say get springs in it, and it fixes things. As opposed to the kit being efficient and getting the exhaust out of it, not causing high back pressure and not needing valve springs. For example, Dakota had stock valve springs on his Boss 302 at about a thousand wheel. It started to float the valves. So it all depends on it all depends on your setup, your turbo kit. 
but he had a fluid twi- has a fluid twin turbo kit on and he just upgraded the valve train the cams locked the cams badass valve springs Thing is gonna make a thousand easily all day right now nestor radio says some adobo money bitch keep you keep out the good vids uh alex Cidell, ever since i put the 350 colder intake on my car i've been getting a badass whistle sound like a turbo with the windows down does the red car do that yeah <laughs> it's like like when you could hear the throttle body when it opens slightly you hear a whistle and i'm like oh, okay now this red car right now has the steeda open air element filter the new one the big motherfucker the big hoss um it's good it, idle quality is kind of touch and go because i have a the fans on full blast all the time and i make sure i, I want to shield everything properly but a gt350 cold air intake i'm probably going to put it back on because i just i just like the data better i should dyno the car with this data intake on just to see what it makes but i'm gonna i don't want to you know publicize those numbers because i don't think it's gonna make that much more than a 350 cold air intake in my opinion uh, Carlos Figueroa says, thanks, Pat the One and Alex. Uh, fuck you says, well, will I need to go 85 on a Boss Reel to LU47 injectors from Ford Racing right now? I know there's another company out there offering LU47s. Until we get data, I'm not going to suggest them. So once we get data, we'll be able to see what the deal is um, with, with, those, with those headers. I'm sorry, with the uh, injectors. Sorry, I was reading something. <clears throat> Where's the weak spot on Gen 1 Coyote? Rods. Rods, rods, rods. General Coyote, rods are the weak point. Lewis Daily Life says, I have a Gen 2 6R80 and a full bolt on 85 with a stock air box and an AFE dry filter and a Mission Moto 120 millimeter induction. Hose good for setup. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. Hose good for setup. How's that for a setup? <sighs> stock air box with an AFE dry filter and Mission Moto 120 millimeter induction. Dude, I don't know what the fuck you just said. I have no idea what you just said, Lewis Daily Life. You paid five bucks and you confused the shit out of me. So what I'm going to tell you is if you want a decent air box that has decent IAT and it's bigger than like a 15 and up, get a 2018 stock air box. That, that'll do. Look at this guy getting my attention the right way. What mile per gallon? Smiles per gallon. Uh, I got a comp blower cam stage two and we'll be including limiters inside the phasers. Will this coyote chop? No. It won't chop. It won't chop stage anything cams will not chop if you buy cams for chop you're buying the wrong cam if you want chop leave the stock cams in there and put a ghost cam tune in it or if you're one of those psychopaths that think that buying a cam or cams four of them are going to make the car chop with vct active you are wrong because the same shit has to be done to that car to make it chop then has to be done on a stock cam car for it to chop you need ghost cam phasing to make those guys overlap enough to chop they're not going to chop on their own midlife crisis racing says i installed an aluminum drive shaft then it's making noise on acceleration any idea what's causing it so wait a minute you install the drive shaft it wasn't rattling before and now it's rattling maybe it's your drive shaft <laughs> you gotta understand man when you put an aluminum drive shaft in there, you're going to it's going to be different. It's not going to be silky smooth like stock. I don't care what any manufacturer says. There's going to be some more vibration than stock. Just a little more, okay? So, be mindful of that. The stock drive shaft is a two-piece with a big center bushing and it cuts down on any kind of vibration and harshness. A stock a, a aluminum drive shaft is just one big hunk of aluminum from front to back, no additional support. So, you will get a slighter variable and a more vibration than you would stock for sure guaranteed always i have an 18 performance pack 10 speed and we were talking about how i was thinking my pump was the issue and that i had a dh 400 aside from my blower that i was going to install to see if that fixes my lean issue 18 pp 10 speed we're talking about how i was thinking my pump was the issue and that i had a dh 400 aside for my blower that i was going to install to see if that fixes the lean issue yeah give it a shot 50 shirley um yeah something was going on with your car where it just started to crap out and i've seen a couple of guys replace your fuel pump because my 18 mustang the stock fuel pump died stock like that thing was stock and it just died pat the one says alex are the coyote swap compact trucks out there uh older regular cab ranger how do you how do they run at the track not that i know of i know there was one that was claiming to be the fastest coyote ever and then when we put up a guy that went eights with a coyote we we're like guys this one came with a coyote and he had a i think short bed 
green twin turbo truck and it was running like eights or something like that but he sold it or whatever um i there's not that many regular cab swapped coyotes out there there's a lot of f100s like old f100s but a lot of the guys that build an f100 don't build it for speed they build it because the truck's kind of cool looking i don't i don't get it but i get it i get that they get it but i don't get it um they buy an f100 put a coyote in it and they just go cruising and i'm like Ugh. Ugh. alex what power can i expect on a gen 2 coyote 6 rid Gen 3 Whipple, 3625 Pulley, 93, FIC 1000 injectors. Your favorite kind of question. Jesus Christ. Look, I'm going to say if it's auto, you're going to be in the 650, 670 range. Uh, if it was manual, you'd probably be touching close to 700 because the manual lets you have a little more power to the rear wheels. Um, 3625 Pulley and 93 and or E85. E85, you'd be well into the 700 range. On uh, 93, you'll be in the high 600 range. Retos Forza says 19 PP1. If the engine is left stock, can the MTD2 take some hooning? Yeah. Yeah. How did your car ride on 22s? Actually, it rode really well. I still have access to those wheels if I want them, but my car looked good on 22s. It looked good, but it's not something that I would ride on unless you can find a 22 inch drag radial. Do they make a 22 inch drag radial anywhere? Because the wheels that were on it at 700 wheel. Did not like it. It hated life. Would you rather own a 2020 GT500 or a 2020 Challenger Red Eye? 2020 Challenger Red Eye. I already have a 730 or 720 rear wheel horsepower 18 or 19 manual. That satisfies the handling urges, the the boosted manual urges. That I am so satisfied in terms of cars. I have a fast auto car. I have a slow NA car. And I have... Um, a pretty quick and great all-around triathlete of a 19 Mustang performance package with 700 plus wheel. So 2020 GT500, I don't think shocks and amazes me. I'd rather have a GT350 with a Whipple on it or twin turbos. And that would, I think, satisfy a completely different urge. But I would do a red eye because it is big, comfortable, and with very minor modifications well into the nines, well into the nines. Side note, I'm gathering parts for my Vortex supercharge install, and I'm doing OPGs. Anything you recommend installing while we're in there? I would stay away from certain companies in terms of OPGs. I would do um, I would I would get MMR or TSS. That's my opinion. If you want to get anyone else, that's on you. Don't matter to me. Um, and while you're in there, honestly, no. As long as your car doesn't have that intermittent idle dip issue that a lot of 18 and up Mustangs have, I think you'll be okay. Raheem Wilson says, hey, dude, thanks for referring me to Power by the Hour. I bought a long block for the low, low. Nice, Raheem. Yeah, if you guys need some, some engines, guys, guys, if you guys need some engines, I'm saying rebuildable stuff that you can get, get your hands on and then refreshing it up, hit a Power by the Hour. They seem to have gotten a, a decent supply of engines in stock. Hit them up. Tell them I sent you so that they know I want you guys. Anytime I refer you to Power by the Hour and someone picks up the phone and says Power by the Hour, I want to say Alex sent me. Alex sent me. I want you to say that because I want I want to make sure that Jake knows that, hey, man, I'm sending you guys down your way. Anyone here seriously looking at a new Ford Compact Maverick pickup truck? <laughs> what? Oh, my God. Alex, do you arm wrestle? Check out Wall on YouTube. I don't arm wrestle at all. Um, I know that there's a arm wrestling league, and there's this big, tall dude. I forget his name, but he's super jacked, and he, he's all forearm and bicep, no tricep. And he's like, and they do this thing called, I know that Junior is, is fascinated by the arm wrestling league. And um, there's a, I forget, there's a position that a lot of guys do where they outstretch their arms, and they just camp out, meaning you can't bring their arm down and, and pin them or whatever. They kind of camp out like this and get you tired. And then eventually they'll work their way up and, and bring you over. I forget the move though. King, the King's move. I think it's called the King's move where you just camp out with your arm out like this and just wait. <laughs> and then uh, 727 and 757 says, Hey Alex, what's the best way to get my IATs down? My 17 stage two Roush 2.3, just swapping it out to an upgraded intercooler, 728 wheel, 610 torque, pump 93, no 85. Um, AFCO has great heat exchangers. So hit up AFCO for some dual pass trip, dual fan, triple pass heat exchangers. And, um, that's kind of it. Unless you're willing to put an ice tank in it, which again, kind of, 
you, more water capacity will help, meaning a bigger tank, but it's going to eventually get hot anyway, and you, you can only get that much cooling just from more water capacity. Eventually, you'll just need better inner cooling, which is like a heat exchanger upgrade. Devon Larrett, exactly, Degenerate Spurg. Devon Larrett, big, massive dude. He, he arm wrestled that guy, the mountain, the guy from Game of Thrones. He made him look like a baby. Look him up. He made him look like a baby. He's like, okay, you want to go? You want to go? Okay, okay, go. And the guy was like, the mountain was like, yeah. And he was like, okay, now watch this. I was like, damn, that guy has some serious forearm and bicep strength. And he's tall. So he's got these long arms with a bunch of leverage. Like Junior would kill me in arm wrestling because by the time we put our elbows down, his hand is way up here. He has leverage and he's a strong dude. So, you know, I'm going to lose to certain people, period. Uh, Golden Toe says free money. Thank you for the free money. I appreciate that. Uh, how much can a boosted Gen 2 Coyote handle on stock internals? At about 850 wheel. That's kind of whatever boost it takes to make about 850 wheel to 900 wheel. That's when I start getting uncomfortable. 900 wheel, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. It might be able to take a thousand once or twice. I just wouldn't do it on a regular basis. What about a killer chiller? Now, I like the killer chiller in terms of theory. I just don't like the packaging. I don't like how it looks. I don't like how it looks bobo eyes. It looks kind of jank in the engine bay. You're like, I don't like how this looks. I wish it looked more industrial, robust, and refined. But I think in terms of how it works, it does great. It takes the air conditioner to cool its own little tank to about 60 or 50 degrees, right? And it circulates that water constantly through the intercooler making IATs no higher than like 70 no matter what great great system in theory I just wish it was packaged better I'm a head ass I confused us about my intake setup I'm a head ass <laughs> I confused us about intake setup <laughs> hey Alex I have a Fox Rider with a Gen 2 Coyote swap a D1X Pro Charger sorry about your crank 1050x injector made 795 to the wheels on 94 octane woof <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh shit sorry Oh, shit. How far should I go on E85 before the bottom end and, and the crank? You're done. <laughs> he says 795 on pump gas. So you're telling me, um, Cassius R, you're probably a super nice guy. I'm sorry if I might have laughed incessantly, but that sounds ridiculous to me. Unless your car is 15 to 1 compression. You're telling me. Your car made 795 rear wheel horsepower on 94 pump gas, no octane booster, on 13 PSI? Let me just answer your question so I don't come across too much of a dick. Um, I shouldn't go, if you're on the 85, I wouldn't go past a um, 850 to 900 rear wheel horsepower. And... I would put a crank support in it already. <laughs> That's what I would do. There, I answered your question. Do you guys turn off torque reduction from the gate in drag mode on 10 speed? Yes, sir. Like every fucking tune gets torque reduction off. Oh, and then when you're driving down the street, you're like, Whoop. Oh, oh, my pussy. Oh, my pussy hurts so much from the shift. Oh, you guys hurt my pussy. My clit hit my zipper. <laughs> Can you make it shift a little softer at part throttle, please? Please, Dada. Oh, please, Dada. Please make it shift a little softer. My pussy hurts. Yeah, we turn off torque reduction on drag mode. Midlife Crisis Racing says, shop install the, shop install the shaft. <laughs> I am reading it exactly like they're writing it. Shop install the shaft, but this is a heavy rattle when you step on it. In the first couple of days, it didn't do this. Just a slight whine. <laughs> but after a pull, it started to rattle. It doesn't do it consistently. Um, this is what I would do. Um, I would get it rebalanced. And then, then at least in your mind, you're like, okay, it's not the drive shaft, right? Now, I've also noticed there's a lot, there's a lot of... <laughs> 
<laughs> I see the people reacting to the shit I was saying. I see a lot of driveline alignment because when you have a stock drive shaft, it's two piece. So it's a, it's able to articulate a little bit, right? But when you have a solid drive shaft, now you got to be mindful of your pinion angle, right? And on an IRS car, it is a little funky, but you can adjust your pinion angle a little bit. You know, you'd have to get with a suspension person to tell you how to do it and what pinion angle is proper. But you have a solid drive shaft now and your pinion is probably, you know, not a desirable angle. And when you had a two piece drive shaft, the drive shaft was able to at least articulate a little bit and take up any kind of misalignment. So I would look at that, too. Oh, my God, I'm getting texted nonstop. Sorry, guys. OK, so uh, I'm late, but I'm here. Michael Martin says calamar cocktail for my MTD2. Badass shit. Uh, Alex Goodell says, so when when is Jean Grey getting this 5-2? I called that last episode. Uh, I don't have a 5-2. I OK. The transmission kind. <laughs> Alex doing a Paxson 2200 on my 15 performance pack for level two fuel system. 1050Xs, long tube, free flowing exhaust. I want to hit a 50 wheel. Should I do a 3.6 or 3.7 or 3.3? 3.3, sir. 15 performance pack. Dude, it's going to make it's gonna make the jam guaranteed. You got the fuel system, you got the boost, and you have a manual. So it'll show more power at the rear wheel. 3.3, E85, 20 degrees. Send that shit down the road. That bitch will be the happiest car on the planet. Restos Forza says uh got a 19 pp1 best oil for for mtd2 heard people changing it yeah hit up ben calamer calamer um on on facebook and say i want the ben calamer cocktail he'll either send it to you or he'll tell you what to get and that's the dude when it comes to anything transmission manual related ben calamer transmissions period thoughts thoughts on water wetter for intercoolers anyone i heard that they work real well if you don't want to go with like a complete uh, coolant solution with with uh, uh what you call it um glycol glycol is what makes it slippery and glycol is what tracks hate when you have antifreeze in the car and then you blow a head gasket or you you know your coolant overflows and that's what kills the prep it kills that lane it kills everything the glycol so water wetter i think prevents that i got ported heads and bigger valves comp blower stage two cams mm-hmm where are you at uh, JTB billet wheel and a 3125 pulley with a 10% lower. Port a G350 manifold and free flowing exhaust. Built motor 112. How much horsepower you think it's going to make? You know, I made that accent when I did the NASCAR episode. And you know how many people called me a reverse racist? I'm like, wait, you're telling me people don't talk like that? You're telling me that nine times out of 10, if you go to Walmart or any NASCAR event, that people don't talk like that? Come on. Come on. Come on. Um, but okay. So if you got stage two cams, Vortec blower, you're not E85, 3125 pulley built motor. Fuck. You're probably going to make it well into the 900 range. Maybe more 10% lower, dude. It might touch a thousand because centrifugal just keep making power. They just keep going straight up. It doesn't like, there's no, this, there's no VMP Roush Whipple dip centrifugals go with RPM. So you might be close to a thousand rear wheel horsepower if it's a manual. For sure. Very close, actually. Alex, saludo desde Guadalajara, Mexico. I was there the other day making pulls, brother. Thank you, Rodarte Garage. Thank you very much for being a fan from Mexico. Mexicans, the last of the Mexicans. Uh, Raheem Wilson says, on E85 with a built Gen 1, will I be able to reach 850, with, 850 rural horsepower with a Roush blower? Gen 2 Roush on E85 with a built Gen 1. Yeah, like a Gen 2 Roush. Gen 2 Roush has the um, bigger inlet. Um, so yeah, the Gen 2 Roush, not the Gen 1 Roush. Dev you'll need like a 69 millimeter pulley and a 10% to make it happen, but you can do it. Um, your mother should have swallowed, said, are you calling me out? <laughs> I think your mother should have swallowed. Let me see if he's here. He was one of those guys that, if I'm not mistaken, your mother should have swallowed. Um, <laughs> he heard my show one time and he was like, yo, this guy's a fucking asshole bro this guy's a bitch this guy's like a stupid typical puerto rican shit talking northeast punk and then he saw more of my show and more of my channel and more of the videos and he's like fuck fuck he, i like him he's he's a good guy he just makes fun of certain situations and i caught him at a at a i, I caught a clip of the show instead of watching the whole show and i judged him based on that 
you know how many people are out there that were on my train, like like on Team Alex, on YOLO, this and that. Now they're hating it because maybe it maybe I touched a subject too close to home and they're like, oh, fuck that guy. I've been the same fucking dude from the get go. Now, because I touch on a subject that's a little close to home, it's a problem. It's happened many times and I'm OK with it because I can look at myself and go, I'm the same fucking dude. I haven't changed. I've done the exact same shit since the beginning. And once people understand that, they're going to go, you're right. You're right. Your mother uh, should have swallowed. said, I wanted to smack your ass straight up. Well, the problem with that is, is I smack back. I smack back. And that's the thing. Like a lot of people are like, they meet me and they're like, oh, you're a fucking punk. And I'm like, okay, you want to throw down? (laughs) No, not really. I just, you know, I just didn't like you. But I get it. I understand if you see a little chunk of my show, you're going to think I'm a big piece of shit. And if you see the rest of it, you're like, damn, he's actually helping people out there. Which one would you prefer, bracket racing or straight up drag racing? I don't think drag racing, I don't think bracket racing is bad. It's a skill to constantly go a certain number super consistently. And the faster you go and you're a bracket racer, I think the more impressive it is. What's more impressive to me? A car that goes 7-9, then 8-3, then 8-9, then 7-8, or a guy that goes 8-2, 8-2, 8-2, 8-2, 8-2. You know, it all depends on what, what you appreciate the most. But it is a skill, bracket racing. Whereas dra- straight straight up drag racing heads up stuff, it's, it's, you know, it's a run what you brung, whatever, fastest, quickest. But dr- I can't make fun of bracket racing because it is a very tough thing to do, especially the faster you go. So... Personally, drag racing, run what you brung, get there, get to the line first, no index, do your thing. But bracket racing is its own skill and you can't, you can't really like poo poo that. Now, if you're a bracket racer at 15 seconds, I don't care about you. You can go fuck yourself. But if you're a bracket racer at nine seconds or eight seconds, that's pretty badass. Um, regarding the comp can stage three, how much power will the lost be lost to compare to the gains up top. How much low end power I'm thinking he's making. Uh, don't see much data on these naturally aspirated form. Always see these cams on boosted setups. <sighs> dude, dude, stock cam, stock intake are going to make more torque than an aftermarket intake and aftermarket cam. Torque. Horsepower wins races. So if you want horsepower and you're not going to live in the three to 6,000, you're not going to live in the three to five thousand five hundred rpm range you're just not you if you're racing you're going to live in the six thousand and up range so pay attention to where the power comes in at that rpm that's what you should be paying attention to <clears throat> hey alex i got a 19 gt with the 85 lung tune and been getting crazy knock when accelerating and then it stops any ideas <laughs> Have you tried Octane Booster? Have you tried checking your engine bay for any rattling? Did you see my last video about knock sensor issues? Those should be those should be able to answer most of your questions. Alex Goodell says, answer Kyle Brandon's questions. Ported Gen 2 heads on Gen 2 motor or GT350 heads on a Gen 2 motor. He didn't pay today. Sorry. Um, Thank you, Alex Goodell, for having Kyle Brandon's back. Ported Gen 2 heads on a Gen 2 motor or 350 heads on a Gen 2 motor? 350 heads, naturally aspirated, right? 350 heads on a Gen 2 motor will be pretty badass. There you go. 350 heads are pretty badass. When it comes to boost, though, I think the three the, the, the Gen 2 heads have more meat to have better gasket surface, and I think they're better to hold up to bigger boost than GT350 heads. Mario's Mario Servin 1980 says, All Alex has done to me has gotten me into debt. Stop paying me. <laughs> Stop paying me. Section of the parts about LS tuners. Shit had me rolling. I'd share the shit out of it section out the part about ls tuners shit had me rolling i'd share the shit out of it did i say anything crazy i didn't say anything that crazy i don't think jesus christ someone just paid me 50 bucks i am kind of lost on where to go next again 2017 roush 2.3 with a 79 millimeter pulley i have a jlt called their intake i'm pump 93 no 85 where he lives i already have suspension done i maxed out on fuel at 728 wheel and 610 torque i'm thinking of cooling or colder spark plug next any advice no don't worry about the spark plugs look your next step is octane booster i love you your next step is octane booster or some kind of race gas like c16 or ms109 727 and 757 why because then you can pull it down to like a 75 millimeter pulley as long as your fuel system keeps up and you can shove another 
two or three degrees of timing into it, which can gain you about 50 to 60 rear wheel horsepower. That's your next step. I think you've done everything you needed to do in terms of, you know, main components. But if you cannot go E85, why not go race gas? I've seen guys on Octanium or Boostane gain 20 to 30 rear wheel horsepower. And with the added octane of that octane booster, you might be able to pull it down a little bit and have a little more timing and be pretty safe. So that to me is your most cost effective next method of making more power with your car, 727 and 757. Talking shit moment. Uh, time to move on from the COVID. Learn better hygiene. Take better care of yourself and others. Open up this country. You're, you're 100%. Look, if you ever see War of the World, War of the World is a beautiful example. A beautiful example. Aliens come to this, the, the Tom Cruise version, even the old version. Aliens come to this planet, take it over. Then they get sick because of all of the germs that are in the air that they were not immune to. Because they had been in their own planet doing their own shit. Then they come here and the little microbes killed them. So what do you think is better for your body? To get out there and have your immune system, you know, battle COVID? Not saying to go slick on everyone's face to get COVID. I'm saying if you mask yourself, you shun yourself from society, you wash your hands, then you go out into the world... Are you less likely or more likely to have a deeper effect from COVID than not? I'm one of those guys that I don't take, if I have a headache, I don't take medicine. If I have a cough, I don't take cough medicine. If I have sneezing sneezing issues or, or allergy issues, depending on the severity, I don't take anything. Why? Because I want my immune system to be strong as fuck. Because what happens when you're constantly pilling up? Your body's like... Ah, if I get sick again, I ain't going to fight it. I'm just expecting a pill to come from the top. And then you get sick and the body's like, I ain't doing shit. I'm waiting for that Tylenol. I'm waiting for that Advil. I'm waiting for where there it is. Oh, there it is. Ah, fuck, we're good now. Or you could actually build up your immune system. When If I had a kid, and this is the problem. This is probably why a reason I did not have children. If I had a kid, I'm like, go out there and play with all the other kids. Get sick. Kick them in the dirt. Get in the dirt. Get dirty. Mm, get over there. Get your immune system strong. <sighs> you know, because I want the dude to go out there and build up his immune system and be strong. But nowadays, people are driving with masks in their cars, gloves in their car, in their cars, in their cars. And then when they start taking that stuff off, who's going to get sick first? Someone like them or someone like me who's been out and about doing their own thing. No mask. Again, practicing decent hygiene, but I'm not out there like a psychopath constantly purelling all the fucking time. No, I'm, gonna, I'm, just, I'm just not licking anyone's face and I'll be okay. And if I get sick, guess what? I might be better suited to handle it than if I was this guy closed up in a place, not, you know, constantly, you know, washing up and all, mask, uh, my immune system, I want it to be strong. I'm not going to have it compromised based on fear. Fuck that. Sorry to get off on COVID bullshit. E85 race gas and 93 octane, E85 race gas, or 93 and octane booster. If all three technically made the same octane, as a tuner, would you command the same amount of timing? If that's a stupid question, I'm asking for a friend. Also, $20 Canadian is only $14.36. Enjoy. <laughs> that is an excellent question. Excellent question. So, if you have, let's say, let, let, let's talk boosted 10 PSI. 1101 Coyote. If you have 93 octane in it, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, I'm not going to give you anything more than 16 degrees of timing or so, maybe 17. Whipple Gen 3s, for whatever reason, you can probably get away with 18. Pump gas. E85, 23 to me is the cap. 23 is the cap. What does that mean? From 18 to 19, there's gains. 19 to 20, there's gains. 20 to 21, not that much gain. 21 to 22, not that much gain than from 18 to 19. So 23 and up to me is just up, not worth it. So let's say 23 is the cap. If you have 93 in Octane Booster, I'm going to give you 21, 22 degrees. If you have E85, I'm going to give you 21, 22 degrees. If you have C16, MS109, I'm going to give you 21 or 22 degrees. Which one's going to make the power out of all of them? E85. 
E85 has additional cooling benefits. It just, it makes the car happier. It has 105 octane, fits 85% ethanol. So all things being equal, you having the octane, I'm going to give you the same timing on all three. The car is going to perform different based on the fuel properties. But as a tuner, and I know you got the available octane, I'm going to give you the same timing. That's a great question, actually. Do you think the documentary pandemic is real? Um, okay. So since I'm one of those skeptical guys from the get-go, I Googled, I Googled every person on that documentary that I could. And they're all suspect. They're all suspect. Every single one of them is either selling a book or they've been banned from this or banned from that or this or blah, 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 blah. So I went, I'm going to take a step back from pandemic and not share it like it's law. Because after Googling, doing my own research, going, yeah, these people are full of shit too. <laughs> so I just went, eh, it's entertainment. Look, guys, I'm entertained. I'm entertained. There is a great part about on the movie Training Day where he's sitting down and he's at the coffee shop with uh, the, the, the new cop. And he's like, this is all entertainment. Let me see. Training Day scene. He's like, this is entertainment. Training day entertainment uh, scene. Here you go. Training day diner scene. Let me see if this... I don't know if you guys can hear it, but... Let's see. What are the speakers set up to? Oh, it's long as shit. Here we go. There we go. Here we go. <laughs> if you guys can't hear it, sorry. There we go. Here we go. So this is the way I feel about Facebook. <laughs> exactly. So that's the way I feel about Facebook. And everything that is shared on Facebook, I feel is bullshit and it's entertainment, right? So when I saw the pandemic video come about, I go... Okay, those people are probably full of shit, but let me Google them. Okay, yeah, she's full of shit a little bit, and so is that guy, and so is that guy. So I said, all right, it's entertainment. Fuck it. But y'all sharing it like it's law. Come on, get out of here. <clears throat> Louis Lara says, lunch money, 20 bucks, says, got to be hitting the track, going to be hitting the track Friday in Houston, and my Gen 1 E85 flex fuel or free-flowing exhaust, 18 manifold. Now it has a 5C converter. Best before was 1190 at 116 on the Poquito Mas Sazon tune you sent me. Hoping for mid 11s pass now. Dude, if you get grip, that thing is going to go mid 11s. I guarantee, especially with that converter. John Kena or Kenna says, if you choose to do so, how how and what would you build to challenge a stick shift minion Mustang? <laughs> Boy, that's easier said than done. So he he has such a great combination in that car. It's really hard to beat. But if I was to build... God, that, that, that's a shitty question because I don't want to take anything away from TT T. Minion. That guy's a great guy, but it would be a notch. It'd be a... It probably would not be a Coyote notch. It would probably be like a big inch cubic, big cubic inch, big cubic inch small block board, 427. Big turbo. Black. I'd be calling Black Magic. I'd be like, Black Magic, the clutches... I need your sauce. I need your shit. Let's go. Face plated T56 and many, 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 many test sessions. Guys, I'm probably going to have like $100,000 into that car. TT Minion has built an amazing vehicle. The fastest stick shift Ford, period. Like, period. So to, 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 to build something to go up against it requires, you know, you know a lot of know-how um, a good investment and a good team. And I don't know, I don't have anyone on my team that is team stick shift. Nobody on my team is team stick shift. It's all auto, auto, auto. So I run the Fairmont because Jake Long is my friend, a very good friend. And I want to make sure that I could support that car, that vehicle. And he gave me a great deal on the 6R80 and I run it because I want power by the hour to succeed and I can always rep their transmissions, right? But <laughs> if it was up to me, meaning money, no object, 
big inch, small block forward, billet shit, badass shit, twin turbo, dumbass shit, black magic, crazy shit, 2,900 pound shit, real light shit, and uh, cross my fingers and a lot of testing and a lot of broken parts, but I'm sure that I, I think I can do it, but it, 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 it requires a massive investment that I just don't have in me at all, period. Kyle Brandon, you are a psychopath. Seriously, you're a psycho. There is no, you have put four to 500 bucks into this show in a month. You're either loaded or you're maxing out that credit card. Because... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but as always, thank you. Before you, it's going to be YouTube Corrupt Anti Free Speech. I can't, you know, go over him. He goes, I want to swap my 19. This is YouTube Corrupt Anti Free Speech. I want to swap my 1910 R80 to, from 355s to 315s when I get the blower. What differential do I need? I've been looking for one, but I can't find any information. What do you mean? What differential do you need? Why don't you just buy the whole center section? Some people will trade you YouTube Corrupt from 315 to 355 like you can say i have a 355 for trade and someone with an auto like an na car will go i want that i'll trade you my 315s for your 355s that's what i would do but make sure you take your flange with you the flange that is currently in your center in your differential take it out and put it in your new diff and he has to take his out and put it in his new diff that's what i'm doing in the 3 in this car i found someone to trade me 373s for 315s in this car. Matter of fact, if you had 373s, I'd trade you. But I wanted 373s and I found someone to trade me. I'm going to take this out, take my flange, and uh, trade up, trade straight up for the guy. So Kyle Brandon paying another $100, which is psycho for doing. Because I was trying to respect the free speech show, but you called, you called out that I did not pay. I didn't mean, no, the guy said you didn't pay. Jesus Christ. So lick my balls. Here, take my money. Thanks for answering my question. And thanks, Alex Cadell, for making you see my question. Haha. Ha. Always a great show. And Lund Racing for the win. You are a psychopath. But thank you for being psycho on my show. Crazy. Uh, boosted GT350. And the engine just shut off last week. No knocking. Good fuel pressure and spark. Cranks, though. 40 PSI compression on all cylinder. 40 PSI? So it's fucked? <laughs> so it's destroyed? <laughs> I mean, did you lose 15 pistons? Did, are all the pistons in the in the oil pan? Because 40 PSI compression? <laughs> did you mean 240? How much power do I need to run a low 9 at 150 mile an hour? I have a twin turbo S197 and it makes about 960 to 1025 wheel. But it's just rods and pistons car. 3400 race weight. You're there. The red car went 9-1-152 at 930 rear wheel horsepower, 3800 pound. I'm sorry. 3,900 pound race weight. You're there, Nitrous LX, L LTX 6 Gen. 727 and 757 says, I have 373s I want to swap for a 315 or 355. 727, get with YouTube Corrupt Anti Free Speech. Anti YouTube Corrupt Anti Free Speech wants 315s and you have, oh wait, you have 373s. He wants 315s. Um, I mean, 727. You might be able to trade with me, but I got to see what ends up with this guy here. But I don't want to be down too long. This guy's local to me. I want to be long maybe. I want to be down maybe two days. And unless you're local to me, I probably wouldn't be the guy to trade you. Cash at me, Kyle. <laughs> Someone said, Jose Vergara says, cash at me, Kyle. 700, but who's counting? Laughing my ass off. <laughs> oh, shit. Jaden Larson says, I think it's awesome that TT Minions block is a stock 281 4.6 aluminum block. That is, look, look. The most impressive stick shift car. Actually, the LT1 is pretty badass too. Uh, grub race, grub, grubworm. Tick Racing's grubworm, or I don't know if it's built by Tick Racing, um, but uh, the grubworm is a badass motherfucker. The Granis Racing Supra is the quickest of them all. I think it went 7 0. And T56. And uh, TT Minion. It's like a 750, 740 car. <laughs> Look. That's the way I do it because it would be a just to drag my dick like here and it's going to go, you know, I'd be shooting for sixes, you know, and that's that's very tough. It's it's easier said than done. It is insanely difficult to me. Stick shift racing is so fucking pure and natural and badass that I don't compare it to anything else. Every single time you go to Texas 2K, every single time you go to World Cup, every single time you go to any race, when the stick shift cars come up, everybody's standing up. Unless it's the grudge cars. Grudge cars, everyone's got money in the game. But when the stick shift cars come up, everybody is standing up. 
Yeah, then you see like Coyote run 7-2, Coyote run 7-3 with a Power Glide or a 6R80. You're like, okay, cool. Then you see a stick shift car go up and run a 740, 730, and you're like, God, and it's shifting like a man. It's hard to beat that. It's hard to beat that as a fan. Huh. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to start getting out of here. I did not intend on making this a paid episode. I literally said disable monetization, and I guess those things don't have anything to do with each other. I did not want to get paid today, but I appreciate you guys paying me. This was supposed to be a free show. I'm going to be on Tuesday again, so I might make that one a free show because uh, – I love to take your money, but I also don't want to seem like I'm a greedy asshole constantly coming on all the time and trying to take your money. For those of you that um, that think I'm full of shit, you know, I definitely made sure that I turned off monetization right here. It's off, but for whatever reason, that's, you know, that's, you know, still allowing you guys to pay for questions and everything. So I'll be back on Tuesday. We'll see what happens between now and Tuesday, and I'll talk a bunch of stuff. 707 Horsepower Addiction says, you missed me, bro. Okay, let me scroll up. And he says 3.6 upper. And he met, he says, I have a 15 GT with a built motor, PMP heads, ported and polished, P1X, but it's located at the same location as your Vortec. Hmm. A 20% lower return E85 fuel, fuel system and pump gas, water, meth injection, and 1050X. Enough? <sighs> Enough? 20% lower? Uh, the water meth injection might help you with the octane, but man, that's going to be a tough one. If you have a return style fuel system, I would go E85 if I were you. You said you have a 3.6 upper and a 20% lower? Dude, that's like a 3.3 three and a 10%. That's going to make a lot of fucking power, dude. So it's going to be probably close to 900 wheel. Uh, it's a 2015 GT. So Jeremiah Camp has a 3.6 upper and a 20%, and he has made like 840 <laughs> or something like that with E85. So you're going to be in that range of making big boy boost well into the 20 PSI range, it looks like, or close to it. You're asking if the water meth injection and the ID1050s are enough. I think the injector is enough, especially with the water meth. But yeah, and I think keeping the fuel dense is probably a good idea. So pump gas with like water meth. Got to get that mix right, though. Honestly, I would do just straight meth <laughs> and no water. And hopefully... That'll be enough to make that car live with a 3.6 upper and a 20%. What is a perfect daily 18 plus Mustang in your opinion? Honestly, I, I'm biased. I love the way my 19 is set up. Vortex supercharger, 3.6 upper, 700 wheel, pump gas, and it's just perfect all the way around. Yonse50 says, Alex Armstrong Jr. in video for the channel. He's going to kill me, but I'll do it. I'll do it. He'll kill the shit out of me though. And we all, we've all been out of the gym for a very long time. So, fuck, I'm going to feel like I'm, I'm going to get fucked. It'd have to be a two out of three. Ooh, my chest is cracking. Hey, Alex, new to your channel. Uh, awesome info. 15.50 cooks long tube headers and a free-flowing exhaust. And I got a Cobra Jet with a twin twin VMP 169. You mean a twin 69. Uh, and a PMAS cold air intake. ME52s, 85 What cam and rear gear would you recommend? MT82 manual with a Mantic clutch. Well, what year? 15? Uh, 373. Because uh, you need to rev it to the moon, you know, with cams. And I would do like a comp cam stage 3 NA. Just get the, the very off-the-shelf, run-of-the-mill comp cam stage 3 NA. 373s. Mantic clutch, 20 inch tall slick. Yep, 373s. That's the way to do it, in my opinion. If you're drag racing it with that tall of a slick, you might want to consider 410s. But I think 373 will do real well for your setup with the RPM that you're going to be turning with that particular setup. JS Stang 91 GT. Thanks for being a fan of the channel and new to the whole game. And thanks for the uh, for the channel support. Really appreciate that. Nitto's new NT55 V2 comes in 305, 40, 22, 31 inch drag race radio. Fuck it, YOLO, do it. <laughs> What's that cost? Like $500 a tire? I'd think about it. You know, I would think about it, Smitty Schmitz. If Nitto, uh, Nitto's not going to, Nitto's too busy sponsoring the Freedom Factory's Crown Victorias. <laughs> They're probably going to go broke for sponsoring that guy. Um, but I would consider it because I think they look really good on the car. A lot of people go, oh, they look Bobo 22 inch. Look, I don't care what you think. I don't really care what you think. I care what I think. And there's some niche wheels. So if I can get some drag radios on those 22s, I'll be talking to Jake because those are Jake wheel, Jake's wheels. Ah, okay, right. Good way to pass a day. Make sure you like, like the video. Like the video. Hey, Alec, what do you think of the team and their guy at Ron and Steeda and Pompano? Good guy. 
great people at Stita. Love the guys at Stita. We uh, tune their NA car. We tune a lot of their customers' cars. They're great people. Rods and Pistons, stock sleeves, six rip. Six rib? How much power do you think will be good on E85? Six rib. Rods and Pistons, stock sleeves. So anything more than, again, 800, 850, maybe 900 if you got rods and pistons, the problem is going to be the sleeves and, you know, the little area above the cylinder, right? There's a little cavity that's just open and once those cylinder walls start flexing that's when you can crack a crack a crack a sleeve or crack a cylinder i did it in the red car cracked the cylinder looked like a busted head gasket but after tear down it was a cracked cylinder sleeve the block problem fixed riley newfeld says just get that wrist bent most important part of an arm wrestle yeah i gotta get that and junior has big dude is six six or six four he's a big fucking dude he's gonna grab my hand and he's got big hands on him he's gonna be like this and yeah, it's going to be tough, but I'll do it for the channel. Fuck, I'm going to get my ass beat so bad. I don't care. And look at your arm to prevent arm breaks. And look at your arm to prevent arm breaks. Look at my arm. Okay. <laughs> to look down. <clears throat> Any off-the-shelf rods for seventeen three fifty? Mm, Nestor, I'm not 100%. You might want to call LNM on that. Stupid question. When you get a flex tune from Lund, you also get a dedicated E85R tune. Yes, you pay for a flex tune, you get an E85R tune. If you pay for just an E85R tune, you get a flex tune. They cover both. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I don't want to stay here all day. I really appreciate you guys did not have to pay me a dime, please. But I really appreciate all the guys, Kyle Brandon, YouTube Corrupt, and Free Speech, everyone that supported the channel. Um, you guys are great. I'm going to be back on Tuesday. So if I can find a way of making that guy free, I will because I really don't want to take your money every week. But if it's not and you guys still pay me, that'd be awesome. So I'll do my... I'll do my best to get you guys um, good content between now and then. I'm sure something's going to pop off on the internet or something's going to come up during the work week that I'm going to make a, a subject matter on the next video, which will be Tuesday, 8.15. For those of you that watched the dating channel, I did not make a video last week because let's be honest, I didn't have much to talk about. There's not much going on during this COVID stuff. If you guys have suggestions I want to talk about, go to that channel and drop some comments in there and you can say, hey, Alex, talk about this and I'll do my best to get you guys some content on that channel everyone's like covid tiffany story i don't have any okay you can date during covid you can date during covid so I, i'll probably talk about quarantine dating and the next live stream for the for the dating channel but see you guys tuesday we'll talk some more shit on tuesday car shit and we'll go from there thanks for listening talk to you later